if this will be the first time to Hong Kong to help to hold this uh, regional conference. Uh, BYMS is a global uh, many society. We have about over 30 chapters around the world. And in Asia, we have uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is chapter. Taiwan is chapter. Uh, Korea has chapters. Mongolia, even Mongolia has chapters. And uh, so, in the past, uh, we had this regional conference from 2015 until now. And so each year we will have the, the conference in different countries. And now we are very glad to have. Uh, this uh, presentation. So now we turn time to our speakers. So please give a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, good um, morning. Yeah, good morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dennis Chen from uh, Medics and Robotics. So uh, that is my second time uh, at uh, being an entrepreneur to try to build something that I can sell and earn a living <laughs> and um, so actually uh, why I wanted to start this uh, because I believe um, um, we, we should do something like especially the issue of applying uh, technologies that can help us to improve our living standard like uh, enhance our quality of life especially for the elderly right, because right. like nowadays uh, the aging population aging uh, issue is uh, quite uh, um, 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 in the series uh, in uh, in Japan or in uh, Asian and as actually this is a global issue, right? So um, yeah, so I think we should um, put more effort and focus on this way, uh, not just for uh, business, but also can create some value, like social impact through through the device, through technology. And so today uh, I want to share a little bit like um, about the health tech for the elderly. So. Yeah. So yeah, everyone know that um, if it is a uh, living things, it's uh, like cells, uh, like organs, like insects. Every every living, even organism or or uh, um, um, living things, that they will have one one day that will degrade, degenerate, degrade. Um, so um, including like us, like human being. So one day we will get old. And what happened to our body, our organs, our muscles, our 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 um, uh, every like uh, functions like mobility, so things that will de degenerate. So um, so that's why uh, we should um, understand that um, we we need to find out something that can solve this problem, especially. Um, uh, this is uh, not not just for one country or, or or just one region, but it's a global uh, issue. So let let's take a look of uh, Hong Kong. What happened to Hong Kong? So in um, 2031, uh, there's a projections like in Hong Kong only there are 2.6 million. Uh, in Hong Kong, it's, it's uh, over 65 years old. So this is a really a uh, kind of a huge amount of uh, Populations that is uh, over 65. Um, this is not only only uh, uh, just an age, just a years, uh, year olds, uh, but, uh, a number, but also it's it causes some uh, many many problems, like especially for the social society to, to the society. For example, like the, some kind of a social burden. Um, I'm not quite sure about the numbers. So right now, one people like, like us is kind of supporting two or three elderly, like kind of a proportion, right? But by the 2031, maybe one, two, five, or six, so we're getting more and more and more. It's kind kind of double. So in in this graph, uh, I take, actually actually I take it from somewhere else. <laughs> so. Uh, here is 2013. You can see this is the under uh, 65 years old, male and female, the populations, and over 65 years old, the population that you try go. And you can see after like around 30 years, you can see the population is getting more and more over 65 here. And you can see actually stopple 
it's a double in the uh, popula uh, populations. So it's like um, this is around um, sixty something, sixty percent, um, sixty percentage. Uh, sorry, thirty percentage of the of the population. So, and this is uh, this is the um, um, statistic that showing that from uh, nineteen fifty to uh, two thousand fifty, you can see um, over the world uh, the black one is increasing for the um, age over sixty, right? Um, and also some numbers comparing the uh, developed the developed uh, regions and also not uh, less more less developed regions. And so, this is uh, another um, more visualized uh, in uh, in a map. So you can see. Uh, what? Okay, so let's stop the laser. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So actually, uh, you can see uh, Japan. So in 2015. In Japan, you can see it's actually nearly to 25 percent of the total population is over um, 65 years old, right? You can see the color change, color. So after like approaching to um, 2050, you can see the whole, really half of the whole world is over 55 years old. You can see it's more easier to understand the problem easier, right? This is not my, done by me. It's uh, done by the uh, United States uh, Census uh, uh, research. <clears throat> so, so a more more accurate like uh, numbers that approx approximately uh, hundred million to three hundred ninety five million people worldwide. That is eighty years plus. Well, so yeah, and also. Um, Including some, most of them is also with some disease like stroke, and also may, maybe some spinal cord injury, uh, that will have some de degrees of mo mobility impairment. And what happened uh, because of this? Um, there may be some increase in the age-related disease like Parkinson's, like Alzheimer. Um, also, the shortage of professionals like nurses who serve them, and, and also the doctors and, and OTs like occupational therapists and physical therapists, and increased numbers of individuals unable to live independently because they need something that they can rely on, some somebody like caregiver to take care of them, so they can live by themselves. They, they need someone to take care, of. and also actually the shortage with the professionals like the care caretakers, caregivers. So and also the cost because uh, we need to spend more and more money to take care of that. The, the healthcare costs will be higher and higher. And also finally we will be lack of facilities, the infrastructure, the system to support this this uh, wave, okay, aging wave. So what is the challenges? that we need to solve. So some physical limitations, like they can't walk balance, uh, losing balance, like maybe they can, cannot reach some objects by the, their, their hands, and some vision or hearing problem, and more also the memory or some, some uh, more cognitive problems, and also some disease that related to the aging. So what, what we need what we need now to solve that? Maybe some kind of daily activities that we, we, we should have them for, for somehow. Some memory functions that they need. And health monitoring like the heartbeat, heart rate, blood pressure. And also the caregiver. They have many stressful. So we need to remove some burden to that. Okay. So maybe the AAL, the ambient, uh, ambient assistive uh, living, may be a solution. So this is kind of what we are doing right now, nowadays, using some kind of technology, not only the system, not only policy, 
not only for the new regulations, but also we, we, we can think, think, think about using technology that can maybe somehow uh, help us to reduce some burden. So first, like, we, can, we, can, we can try using the smart homes. What was what the concept of smart homes? Like, we can use many sensors. Like, nowadays, maybe you, you can hear about the IoT, like Internet of Things. So what, what is the Internet of Things? Like, um, the lights we can, we can uh, install with some sensors and also the control system that we can just turn it on, turn it off with your smartphone or somewhere else. Like, or even it can connect to the internet, right? So you can turn it off when you are not at home, maybe you are at the office or somewhere else, right? So this kind of uh, technology is already well developed, but how we can make use of this to, to become a smart home for elderly, right? So, so by this sensor, we can like maybe some elderly, they, they have the dementia, so they, they, easy, they have the memory problem, like they easier to forget, forgot, uh, to turn off some like the tap, the, the water. So we can install a device that next to it to sense whether the, the water drop out and we can know, oh, the water is off a, off a flow. So we can automatically control the system and turn it off, right, kind of things. So we can use different sensors. Uh, um, you are read the uh, infrared, um, uh, ultrasonic. Um, so we can also put the sensor on on the pressure sensor on the, on the on the floor, so we can see the the elderly, your your, your family that where they, they are walking, like to check the check the, uh, the position and their daily life activities, something like that. Okay, so some so this is uh, some kind of a. Uh, infrastructure and the hardware that install into the environment, like integrate into the environment. Like. But what about the body? So we can also consider to put some sensors or some uh, something that is on your body or with your body. So something like mobile sensors, um, like monitoring, have monitoring like some, you know, maybe some Nowadays, the quite famous like I uh, I uh, I watch, uh, yeah, Apple yeah. Watch. Apple Watch or what what watch like smart <laughs> watch. So so this is uh, one of the health monitoring like they can uh, track your 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 daily life activity, activities like how many uh, miles you walked, uh, run, and also your heartbeat rate at the same time record um, by the with with the time time. Uh, measurement and also they it, it can be like tracking your location your through your GPS inside the watch or somewhere connected with your smartphone it's also can use the smartphone sensors and also some uh, some other technology that we can create some new smart device like like the pen the smart pen like they it, it is uh, integrated with the sensor inside so it can track your movement of your Walking and also some some something may, maybe you, if you're elderly, fall down, you can kind of uh, predict, um, interp interpret uh, the elderly's uh, falling down movement. And some other um, maybe some research things like electronics, like uh, tech, uh, um, uh, the integration uh, on the skin that can detect your movement and also some verbal device that measure the pressure, blood pressure, and also some other like heartbeat, more accurate. <coughs> so these are all the information that we can we can measure. And then after we measure, we can do a lot of things like uh, uh, apart from monitoring, but also we can um, maybe some alarm system, like not notification to families, to doctors, to some um, care centers that they can react to the situation of your body. So if your body had, let's say, uh, four detection, so we detect, detect four, four movement, um, so the system can automatically call somewhere like police or uh, hospital to send the people to, to, to somewhere 
using the GPS location that they know where you are, where your your family, uh, you are uh, there, then they will take you back to the hospital clinics. So yeah, okay. So and here comes the question. Sorry, the information you have. Um, first is where where can you get the information like this? Because if I want to do the business like this, we ask. When we search on the internet, sometimes we don't know how to ask the right questions. So we don't, I mean, search from Google. And uh, like uh, you know that we have, we can use a sensor to know there is maybe someone already designed this kind of can and to help elderly people. Uh, is there some uh, special website we can like this or is there like in, in the world is which one will, will be the biggest exhibition for those designs? Um, <clears throat> okay thank you for your questions uh, so uh, this all these devices uh, are quite new quite uh, uh, in, in, the, in the market so maybe there's no not not uh, there's no specific uh, platform of place that is selling specifically for this kind of product. But they may have this kind of product to sell. Maybe Taobao somehow, <laughs> but they are copied, maybe copied uh, one. But uh, uh, what, what, uh, what I know is uh, uh, there's two or three platforms coming up in Hong Kong, specifically okay. in Hong Kong, uh, by some NGOs. Okay. Um, Sadly, uh, I don't know the English name of uh, okay. yeah. So, uh, so these are two or three NGOs or some some of us from the social enterprise. So they, they would like to set up a platform that is like uh, uh, to encourage this kind of a uh, smart device or um, um, with with high and uh, new technology uh, device for elderly or for for better living, well being things. Yeah, yeah. That, they they are, they are coming uh, maybe next year or this year, the like end of this year, Q4, something like that. Okay, yeah. The reason I ask this is, uh, we know some elderly people have, they have some requirement for, yeah. for something, but we don't know if, they're, if, if the tool has been uh, developed. So, and sometimes we thought, oh, because it's so difficult, so no one will design this for this requirement. But maybe actually somewhere in the world has this has something has been created. Testing. Oh, it's testing. on the tester. But yeah. you know, even we have uh, internet information seems like around the world. Yeah. But it's still because so many information it's sometimes it's hard for us to find out. Right, right, right. Where are where where are they? So, yeah. so that's why I'm thinking yeah. because I'm interested in this. Yeah, business. yeah. I think in Hong Kong maybe it's still a uh, very kind of early, early stage. I but think in Taiwan also it's very early stage. Yeah, but in Japan they, they, they are very well developed and very mature for for this kind of platform. I believe okay. because and also they have a rental service. Yes, I I know, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know yeah, that. yeah. In, in Japan, in Japan. Okay. but Hong Kong no. And I I I've heard about that they they are trying to to have this similar rental service or. We are uh, repairing repairment service for right. this kind of device. Right, but so they can uh, in, in Taiwan we don't some building we don't have an elevator. Mm -hmm. if elderly people live in the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get them down. Mm -hmm. So I, we know there is some uh, device device that have them. They can just climb the, yeah, the yeah. stairs. Yeah. So, but but even I know that. But I found out not many people using you. Uh, even know it? I uh, I think uh, it is a uh, very complicated uh, situa um, situation. Like this is not only for the pub publicity. Uh, it's about the business. I think. Yes. Uh, I, 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 actually, I'm not planning to tell to, to, oh, okay. to Sorry, share yes. about this, but uh, actually, I'm all, I can I can share a little bit in, in the from the business side point of view because when we develop. These kind of robots, right? Or large scale, large large scale 
device. Right. Because well, uh, this kind of device is small, and the cost of the production is quite okay. Quite, um, um, I think it's still to to the to the company. Right. It's still uh, okay. It's still fine. But for for the robots, we if we want to prototype. We do the research and development for this, and also coming up to at the end to to the com commercialize right. commercializations. The cost is quite huge. But how about the ROI? When I sell it, how large is the market? Yes. Whether the people can pay for it. Right. Especially this, they they are like if this is a B two B business to business, yeah, maybe right. okay. But right. how many they can they can buy? How many for for each center? Elderly center or like the uh, hospital or clinics, how many? It's, it needs to be a global market yes. to sell. Yeah. But global market, you need still need to spend a lot of money to do marketing, sell channels, building up the network. Before that, you will maybe die. Right. For, yeah. Especially for a startup like us, yes. we are still surviving. Like we are still thinking yeah. whether we how we can make this one big, a big robot like so the elderly, but without death, like like burning money only, and, and burn a little bit like revenue. But yeah, it's really difficult I know, I know. Uh, to cover the cost, you know. Yeah, so that, that is, that's why, yeah, there are quite a lot of demonstrations, there are quite a lot of prototypes showing up, oh, we have this kind of technology, this kind of robot, this kind of device, smart device, that through internet and using AI, machine learning, and what blockchain, I don't know what, like every high technology integrate, yeah, very exciting, but but reality is whether the people will pay for it, mm -hmm. how how it can be commercialized, get into the market and people can buy it and use it. That is a, the, the thing that, yeah. yeah, the gap between. Right, 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 right. right, right. So therefore, yeah, there are quite a lot of technology that happening, but in, uh, you, you can't find it any, uh, around you around you. Okay. but um, yeah there are quite uh, more more and more uh, NGOs or like every center they would like to try but 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 how much they will pay mm -hmm. that is another thing yeah, so uh, for in, in our case it's similar so we will provide free trial like 10 to 20 devices to to the to the every center so they can use it for free for like one or two three months for just for testing purpose. Yes. But after the testing purpose, what what happened? They they may need to find someone else, like the funder, some foundations like Lee family or somewhere. Someone like they are rich, they will put the money to to the NGOs and to buy them. So this is a process that normally happening in Hong Kong. This is also a strategy that we can urge money, <laughs> but this is very hard, uh, very di difficult, and also complicated process like waiting, waiting, and say so seven yes, months yes, yes. before we really get a deal. Yes, it's not an easy task. Okay. I, sorry. I think the more easy task is we just uh, can uh, apply for the for the funding from the government. Yes. <laughs> Maybe more easier. <laughs> yeah. To to ask for the the uh, cooperation, but but uh, but but this is not uh, um, the worst case. I think okay. So some some NGOs are using your device, right? We can use it for branding, for marketing. Like oh, um, may not um, what car car carters car carters. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So maybe maybe some. <laughs> this is wrong. Okay, yeah. So maybe so some some uh yeah. So you can use videos of the brand to help you to put it into market. Maybe not in Hong Kong. Maybe maybe in some high end market or other countries. But you have a successful case that you prove your concept, prove your market that your technology, your product is working properly and also create the value. Um, that it that can help the elderly 
to improve somehow like the, the, the quality of life, something like that. So this is also not the bad thing. Yeah, so, so, but yeah, how you can survive within the time limit. Yeah, so this is the, the thing that... Okay, good, yeah. good. Yeah, but, uh, so in Japan maybe more common in okay. that way, but in Hong Kong, we are still thinking, figuring maybe out maybe. government, what's the position of the government in, in this situation. The society, like the NGO, the community, and also the companies, like developing this kind of technology, three of us, how we can cooperate together within some structure and system, uh, infrastructure to co-create this society. Okay, some example like um, the yeah the whole robot that served you, the surface robot, and and also some kind of very more more simple robot that have ju just only have the the platform that can serve you. And also some kind of cleaning, uh, cleaning robot or some robot that can uh, 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 help you to solve some daily life uh, problem issue. So uh, and, and also some interesting robot is like they are cute, like uh, uh, like a do toys, like dolls that have something apart from the mobility, apart from the locomotion of like. Uh, Solving the your your hand functions, but more on the uh, uh, psychological uh, uh, level, like helping you uh, in a in a more social, like like talk like uh, through talking with the robots and help you to 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 take a more uh, happy uh, living. <laughs> yeah, so it's very interesting from 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 Japan uh, idea. But uh, so, but uh, there, there are quite a lot of things to do. You can see like <coughs> uh, smart home or smart mirror, both sensing, monitoring system, robots. But I, I still believe like we we should. Uh, I'm more interested or focus on something that can help them to, to to regain their independence. Uh, because uh, somehow, yeah. Maybe our hospital, our elderly center is very smart. They have many monitor system uh, to monitor and prevent you from getting out of the center. But what I, I, I want to see is they can regain their body functions and they can walk walk out of the of the elderly center, walk out of their the home to 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 have a better living, like more social. Uh, into the society. This is what I, I really want to see in the future. Not just only staying at home, lying on lying on the bed, waiting for what? For for yeah. And and also yeah, it's very safe. You you stay in an elderly pet center but doing nothing. Just watching TV? No. We, we, we can do much more bet, better for their life. Right? Or even not just for the living. Maybe they can uh, reduce helping to reduce the burden to the society. They can do something back to the society after they they have re re regained uh, some kind of functions of the body. Yeah. So <clears throat> so that that makes me like recall back in my um, childhood, like when I uh, when I was studying in high school, like form six in Hong Kong. Yeah. So at that time, I read a newspaper about Cambodia. Right? Oh, yeah. Cambodia, they have the problem like the, the landmine uh, because of the uh, Second World War. Um, so the people get easier to get, uh, lost their leg because of the landmine. But but why they they, they yeah well, actually they know where they, they have the uh, the landmines, but why they still get the get the legs. Uh, lost because they need to go over there to dig the landmine out to exchange for money. So this is kind of not only the landmine problem but also the society problem. Like they, because they are poor, they want to, to have that things to for for a living for for money. So at that time, I, after I read the news, I think why this is uh, so so unfair. Uh, right now, 
uh, at this uh, in in these centuries, we we have well educated system in Hong Kong. We have a good uh, living environment. We have everything actually very very good uh, stable society. Um, but at the same time, in other part, another part of the world, someone or some child they they can't even play the football because of the landmine because they, they can't have a proper body to walk to, to play. The childhood compared to with our childhood is so much different. So at that time I think so I learned a lot of uh, technology science from my high school where whether I can do something that can help them. Yeah. So um because of my interest, I, I like to build something, mobile model, uh, play robots for my childhood. I start designing something that maybe some robot leg, robotic leg that can help them to walk. So I start drawing things and building robot on my own uh, in, in school. This is a, a workshop uh, in a high school. So I start building piece by piece. Uh, one by one, and uh, so this sort of graphics that I draft uh, during the, that time uh, when I was in the high school, and uh, so actually I I'm, I'm kind of, uh, taking reference when I drawing this I taking reference to, uh, from from the from the instruction paper like uh, the on the model toys yeah so I start building the first one one two three. And at the end, I create um, a prototype that I can use it and try it. Um, yeah. So this is uh, that with uh, my my first attempt to to create something that trying to help or solve the problem. And this is uh, that makes me have the first feeling, a passion that I should. Yeah, I should be uh, doing that in my life, trying to do something that can help them to regain some kind of body functions. Yeah, so this, so what I've done uh, is in 2006. So this movie is 2008. At that time, I didn't have any, any idea about the exoskeleton or Iron Man. So after, after the Iron Man movie come out 2000, in 2008, Oh, so cool! I, I really wanted to build this. This is the the thing that I really want to do. Dream robot. <laughs> yeah, dream robot. So, yeah. So after that, mm, I'm trying to think. Mm, but 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 the problem is, I'm not a Tony Stark. I I'm really poor. Uh, I don't have that rich money. How I can build it? So yeah, just leave it. And then I I stick. I keep uh, continue my study, and so at the at the end, I I, I went to UK to start my third master degree <laughs> in medical robot robotics. Uh, so before that, I studied physics, and physics is helping me to to train my mind thinking and the, the yeah, but but not really uh, robots or robotic or any medical uh, uh, knowledge that related. So. After after that, so I, I decided to, to 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 go to UK to start my another uh, field that is medical robots, and therefore I take this uh, chance. I talk to my professor to talk to my supervisor. So I want to make use of this chance to make something that can wearable is wearable and also robots and can help people, and therefore I pick these topics. To, to create something that can help Parkinson's disease patients. And so actually, as you can see, this is uh, actually my best friend uncle. Uh, he got a Parkinson's disease uh, around like more than 10 years. So as you, you can see, it's a very serious case now. It's very severe. And um, even he can't really hold a cup of water, stabilize. Very stable to 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 drink, and not talk not not even not talking about the uh, like like eating or yeah, any other. So it's a really later stage actually late stage. So what what was the uh, Parkinson's disease? 
uh, it's a long term new uh, long term new degenerative disorder disease that can that, that nowadays there's no total cure. So even when they take the pills, it's just as like uh, uh, reducing the symptoms, but but not really cure the the, the problem. So as the time passes, the age getting older and older, the symptoms are getting more worse. Yeah, and that will also really affect <coughs> their daily life activities. And this is not only in Hong Kong, only, only not only in China, but it's a global issue. It's like more than 10 million people. Okay. So yeah, so this is what I do uh, for the research. I start focusing on the hand tremor, like try to study. So okay, apart from Parkinson's disease, Parkinson tremor, actually there are other tremor. So other diseases also have the hand, hand shaking problem. So different frequency and uh, also some part of the body. So I start uh, studying the current treatment and limitation. So they are basically uh, divided by three parts. Medication is like the pills, uh, but that the this is not only this is not a total cure, and also it will be more not not kind of uh, effective over the time. So the some sometimes they will have some side effects to the, to the patients. And also there are some uh, surgery, a neurosurgery that is a different stimulation that you need to take a ribs that open your your head and put the two electrodes inside your brain and do the electrical st stimulation. This is very promising, like after the after the surgery uh, the symptoms will be much better, like reduced much, uh, much. but the, but but that that's still like the surgery is very high risk, especially to the elderly, you know, yeah, and uh, also not not all the all the patients that is suitable for for having this surgery, so this is still not a total solution for that, and. Uh, so and also the, another the, the, the last one is the some kind of assistive device, like single purpose, like the spoon, like and antifibration. Maybe you heard about it, like Google acquired, and also some simple uh, 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 pen uh, for for the writing. So yeah, so 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 I I try to make an ob ob objective that. We need to create something that can stabilize the hand, but uh, at the same time they can do a lot of things, not just for one purpose, but multi-purpose, and also with uh, some smart control. So this is actually my research. Uh, some so this is my initial design during my, my research uh, to create um, this movement. Um, yeah, so it's really cool when, when I <laughs> wear on and try and play around. And so, uh, yeah, it's uh, some kind of uh, movement that you can see how how it can uh, rotate and how it can uh, flex, uh, being the flexion and extension. <coughs> right. So some kind of uh, demonstration to show um, the vibration and before and after. Uh, uh, I I I wear the uh, exoskeleton that I. Uh, I, I, I make um, to, to, to see the um, results. <coughs> so yeah, uh, we got the data and we, we have uh, average in average like 77 percent for the um, reducing of the tremor. But this is still uh, a research like you think like um, uh, um, uh, this is not still uh, far away. <laughs> the commercializations. So these are the uh, 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 data that we capture through the sensor, like the rare mobile sensor that we have mentioned before. So this is a sensor that can uh, we can capture the data and analyze and using the machine learning or some pattern recognition software like algorithm to identify whether they are they are sitting, walking, walk, uh, running, or movement, any kind of movement. 
So this one is the uh, normal normal daily uh, daily activities, but this one is with the trauma. So when they are shaking, they are they are they are walking, sitting, they have the shake shake shaking hands. So we can identify still identify kind of identify the uh, the the movement. <coughs> so uh, kind of uh, accuracy and uh, so uh, it takes me around half to one year uh, after I graduate I think maybe I should continue this project as a startup so after graduation I, <coughs> I tried to start a company in UK but okay um, that that is a problem that I can get any support from like government or funding and then uh, at the end I come back to Hong Kong and after the four to six months I got my first funding uh, from from uh, from government that to support my my uh, development. So this is the idea that maybe like uh, uh, to be a, a robotic glove that can sense and also connect to the apps app to collect the data, but at the same time to respond to the hand trauma shaking and also the real time stabilizing uh, premise of pressure of the hand. thinking maybe we we, uh, we need to put more efforts on uh, improving our, our our device because not not all of the uh, patients that <coughs> they we react the same same um, same um, uh, situation like when when we test on these patients it's uh, the, the defect is really really great but for these patients when we, we put uh, we, we, we activate um, actually yeah they they stabil stabilize the fingers the wrist joints but but still he, she still have some trauma on this uh, elbow joint so it's still a little bit like having the just shaking movement so we are thinking maybe we should uh, make something that is more like more extension to to have more uh, stabilized. Um, structure to that. So we are still like kind of development in a development stage. And but after we have talked to talk to the patients, actually they are not really uh, looking for the hand uh, shaking uh, hand tremor solutions. But uh, instead of like um, actually. They are looking for some solution for the for the for the leg, for the walking problem. So, what what they tell us is they have the freezing of gates. So what is freezing of gates? Actually, it's uh, also because of the pa pa Parkinson's disease patients, uh, Parkinson's disease, the neurological signal that can that cause them they cannot walk in a proper way. Like when we are trying to walk, not trying, but we think we want to walk. We just walk, right? We don't walk. We don't need to think. We don't need to think how to walk, how to start my walk. But to them, they need to start. They need to think. Uh, we sit my left leg first or right leg first. So this is a start that they, they have the issue that they, they don't know how to start. And also, uh, second thing is like when they walk, they will maybe suddenly. They will. They can. They just just stop, and cannot continue. So this is a video that you can see. Uh, it's a patient have the Parkinson's disease, stem, stem, uh, showing the freezing of gait. You can see actually he want to walk continuously, but um, he just stop somehow somewhere, but uh, suddenly we don't know, and he actually he don't know. And also, some problems on turning around. Um, 
of this uh, symptoms. So some people we still need to take care of him and giving him some instructions and tell how help help him. So this is very interesting. Like if we put some lines, the patterns on the graph, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of visual stimulation, right? So, <clears throat> so yeah. what what happened to to, to this? Uh, if uh, have you have you tried when you when you are in a, in the uh, in the childhood? Have you tried uh, a cross uh, like walk, walking across the road like the zebra cross? So you you are trying to to climb cross like walk across the um, step across the lines. Of the zebra uh, cross, like have you have you ever tried this? No, but uh, yeah, so someone yeah, but uh, so this is the concept. Like there's a lines on in front of the patient, so the instruction is very simple. The instruction is like telling telling the patients to try to take their legs across, walk across the lines, or step on the lines, and this is a simple instruction that can help them to think in this way to walk. Right. Yeah. But if without that, they cannot manage it. So following this simple uh, cue and instruction that they can help it, it can help them to use another neural pathway right. to right. go up go go up, go uh, go around the original pathway to connect back to the to the mobility to, to the to the leg. To walk, yeah, and uh, they're therefore, they're wide, they're, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore, we are trying to use of this kind of a uh, visual, visual cue to produce uh, some using the laser to, to, to project on the ground. So this rebel device can get actually carry around. Like if I'm standing here, I will see the lines in front of it. If I'm standing here, I can see my, the lines in front of me there. So I don't need to actually draw lines yes. on the ground everywhere. So even I'm standing in my at my home or at my uh, at, in, 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 in clinics or elderly center or even on, on the streets, the lines can actually help them immediately in the real time to have the effect to help them to walk. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, the the this, this part of the system that we we will help. Uh, but so that's your design. Too? Yeah, this yeah this this one and also another oh, one is a uh, tactile cube. So is this tactile cube can provide a vibration. So the vibration is kind of also the another uh, signal to help them to walk. So this is the visual and this is the tactile. So what happened like uh, because they don't know how to walk like which one which leg like left or right. So through the vibration, we will have the pattern like left, right, left, right. Through the vibration, they can feel the left leg and right leg. So when they feel the left leg vibrate, they will follow the instruction and move the left leg first and right leg uh, and the follow. So this kind of uh, device, this kind of system, can already help them very simple but follow the instruction and walk. But this is uh, just one part of the functions. The another one is the, so we we, oh, we will have the sensor in, in the way to capture the data, so we can know the walking performance, uh, even the training progress, and also we can know whether they, they fall down. Because. So, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, time is awesome. And uh, we can uh, have a look of the video, you can see, uh, when when the patient is getting nervous, the symptoms will be more obvious. Yeah, even he can't walk properly, and uh, he will sit on the wheelchairs for go, uh, uh, going out. And sometimes it just suddenly drop down, and we don't know.